You're smiling. She <laughs> would do. Oh, when you're smiling. You better get ready to. Okay, so there you are. Now you know. She don't know if you know. You only know if you know. Somebody ever tells you, yeah, you do. If you don't, you speak up and tell them, wait a minute. I don't know. Who is it? That's the answer. Too many people take granted for granted today that everybody knows who the Lord was. And they don't know. I went to a church one time and preached. And they said, uh, I asked, had an altar call. And the lady said, well, she comes to church every week. What did she go up there for? Evidently, she didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why. Nobody can speak for nobody else, okay? How old are you? Nine. Nine? Well, you're still on the verge, okay? When you're about 12, then you'll know what's happening. How old are you? Eleven. Eleven? Well, you're close enough. <laughs> so that little wafer right there, that represents the broken body of Jesus Christ, okay? Say, so you got it out? Did you show them how to get it out? You got it. Say, Father God, thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ. Now you break it and you take it. Then it goes in the same manner after supper, he took that cup. And he said, this is the new cup or the new testament. What that means is that that represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ, okay? He shed his blood so... Uh, for the forgiveness of all our sins before you was even born, he knew when you grew up what kind of sins you was going to commit. So he paid the price for you so you're not going to be guilty, all right? All right. Say, Father God, Father God, thank you for the shed blood, thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Because of him Amen. and only him, Amen. I am, I am not, guilty. not guilty. Now you drink that. Now you just got drunk on his blood. <laughs> now in order to become a part of Jesus Christ and a member of the church, which we all are, the church, the church ain't a building where you go to. Each individual, we're the church. We're part of, part of the body. People think when they go to a building down the suburb, that's the church. We're the church. Everybody say that. We're the church. We're the church. We're the representatives of, uh, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what they what you don't understand is, he said, well, what do you got to do to uh, receive eternal life? And he said, well, listen here. All you got to do is repent and be baptized. So what you got to do is you got to go in private to your to God and ask Him for forgiveness of your sins, which He already did on the cross. But you got to ask for it, and then once you put that sin down, you don't commit it again. And there ain't nobody on this whole earth that is not guilty of committing a sin today. Do I got any thieves in here? Anybody steal anything? There you are. Did you ever steal anything? No, you ever go to the grocery store? Yeah. You ever taste a grape? You know, when you go buy a little fruit thing, pick up a grape and eat it? Did you ever do that? No. You didn't? Did you ever pick an apple off of a tree that didn't belong to you and eat it? Yeah. Well, that's a thief. <laughs> you didn't own the apple and you didn't grow it. But you're just as guilty as anybody else. There's nobody... There is nobody in the whole wide world that's not guilty. No one's perfect. Everybody commits sins, okay? There's a scripture called 1 Peter 3.8. It says, all of you live in harmony with one another, be sympathetic, love as brothers, and be <laughs> compassionate and humble. So the whole message of the Lord was all you had to do was love one another. See what I'm talking about? Love is the second commandment. The first commandment is love your Lord God with all your heart, your body, your mind, and your soul. And the second commandment is love your neighbor as you love yourself. 
Now I want to tell you who your neighbor is so you don't get confused. One time Jesus was preaching and the guy came up to him and said, hey, your mother and father are out there, not your mother, your mother and your brothers are out there and they want to talk to you right now. He goes, my mother and my sisters and my brothers are right here. So who's your neighbor? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Does anybody know? He got it in a nutshell. Go like this. Anybody that's in your circle right now is, a, is your neighbor and it's the same to you as you are. Everybody don't believe in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that right now. And the word says that you can't get to heaven or eternal life unless you believe in Jesus. Not Buddha, not Allah, not anybody else. It's Jesus. And it even tells you in this book, once you get to read it, that there'll be many people come along and deceive you and say there's many, many ways to get to heaven. Right now, you ever heard of Oprah Winfrey? She says there's many ways to get to heaven. You can get to heaven from doing good. You can't get to heaven from doing good. You cannot get, it's not by what you do, it's by what he does. You understand that? You understand that? You can't be a do-gooder and get to heaven unless you believe in Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And how do you prove you believe in Jesus Christ? By living the best life you can. Okay? The word also says if you harm any of those little children, you'll burn in hell forever. Jesus didn't come to looking for the saved, neither. Did you know that? Luke 19.10. If you ever remember to open up your Bibles, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came looking for you. He came here looking for you. He came here looking for you and you and you. He didn't come looking for those people in the church that they call the church today. The church is the body of Christ. That's each and every one of you. If Jesus Christ showed up today, I believe, and he just showed up and went to some of these churches today, they'd kill him all over again they think he was out of his mind because all he preached was a message of love and he has to be a great great being of love because I'll tell you what I've been to prison I've been everywhere I've committed some great sins and if he accepts me he'd accept anybody the Apostle Paul one of the greatest apostles and one of the greatest preachers in the Bible next to Jesus, he used to murder Christians. So God will forgive you. So what do you got to do to get Jesus in your heart? Everybody say repent. repent. What does repent mean, Andy? Stop doing what you're doing. Wrong. If you're stealing a grape, stop stealing the grapes. We'll put it, put it simple. If you're breaking a, a law of, the, of Jesus, you should stop doing it. That's not going to win you to heaven, but you should stop doing it. You commit adultery, you ought to stop committing adultery. I always put it easy like this. When I go to marry somebody and I do a wedding ceremony, I tell them, no more hoop to be hoo or bangity bang until you get married because it's against the law of Christ and you will fry for it because the word of God says you ain't allowed to do it unless you're married I'll tell you another thing you got to confess that fault to somebody too and ask God for forgiveness of them. before I married Lynn again I asked the pastor one time that I had to go tell him about my sins, and he says, well, why do you want to get married again? And I told him, because I got a character defect. If I'm not married, I like to do things I'm not supposed to do. So I better get married again and be right. And I think that 
it's the right thing to do in my heart. And he looked at me. So I put a stone on the table and I told him, ye who has not sinned, throw the first stone. He told me, you get to know that scripture too well. But it's not, if you know it and you don't do it, you're going to fry one day. Ye who want to be teachers, if you don't follow the law, but you're teaching somebody else, it's in vain. Jesus called us to be, be lovers of one another and do the best thing we can by taking care of who we're supposed to take care of. We're supposed to love our neighbors, like I said, as we love ourselves. And who are our neighbors? Other people in Christ. Those are your neighbors. Everybody's not in Christ and everybody's not a child of God. Did you know that? Some people are children of the devil. Everybody's not going to have eternal life, but that's a lie. Because everybody's going to have eternal life. But it's not going to be in the same spot. Did you know that? Eternal life's going to be here on the earth. The earth is never going to end. But some people are going to go into the pits of hell and have eternal life there. Eternity for eternity. So everybody's going to get eternal life. But you can choose the spot you want to go to. And all you got to do is ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Then you got to get baptized. And I'm telling you right now, if you've been baptized with the sprinkling of the water on top of your head, you were not baptized. They'll say, well, why do you say that? Because when Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist, he submerged him. And if you look in your dictionary about baptism, it'll say submersion. So submersion don't mean pouring water on your head, being sprinkled, does it? It means you got to be dunked under water. And that Jesus told his disciples, which are all you people, to go out to all the world and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Don't baptize them in the name of the Pope. Don't baptize them in the name of the bishops. Don't baptize them in the name of this, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you got to be baptized. And you got to be baptized. If it was good enough for the Lord to get baptized like that, it's good enough for, for me with what I believe. So if you've been sprinkled, you ain't been baptized. Anybody in here been baptized? Was you baptized? You got baptized underwater? There you are. Give them a hand. Now I suggest you start going to church. should go to church and hang around with other believers so you learn more about God. You know, the more you read this book, you know why I tell you guys to read this book? The more you read the book, the more the light will come into your heart. And the more when you get ready to do something wrong, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. And I'll tell you, that's not right. Anybody ever steal a cookie or something and you knew it wasn't right to do it? just before you did it, I said don't do it, then you go do it anyway, <laughs> yeah, so you go do it anyway, steal the big cookie, but that's why you must be baptized, so you can receive the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will play funny games on you. It'll let you know that you're doing something wrong. I'm not going to tell you you've done anything wrong because it's not my job. I'm not a judge. I'm a preacher. I can just tell you what the Word says. If you want to live that way, fine. And if you want to change your life, that's fine. Because one day you're going to stand up in front of the Lord and He's going to say, you did this and you ain't going to be able to say nothing except I claim the blood of Jesus Christ. Everybody say that. I claim the blood. I claim the blood. 
That's your only way out. But if you know you're living wrong and you're doing something wrong and you continue to do it, that's why I tell those guys a drunkard can't enter the kingdom of heaven. If you die drunk, you're hit. You're fried. You're hit. I died yesterday. Anything. So each and every one of you ought to think about how you're living. I get little messages once in a while in my little brain when I'm talking to people and I can tell how they're living pretty much so. But first of all, I gotta take the speck out of my eye before I can take the speck out of your eye, or the telephone pole out of my eye. <laughs> But a lot of you aren't living right today. You come to church all the time. I know it. A lot of people come to church, they're not living right. They're not doing it. We got people sleeping with one another, they're not married. It's against the law of God. God had man and woman to be married to create men and women. Adam and Steve can't create men and women. And the world's all upside down. And it says in the end times, they'll say, well, that's okay, this is okay, that's okay. It's not okay. And you look at some of these rock stars. I did a little study one time. Most of the guys that are hip, that are big rock stars, are Christians. And the ones that make it big are Christians, and the ones that ain't Christians, they usually end up dying of drug overdose and everything because they don't know God. These football players today are supposed to be role models for our kids. They're in the news every day. They're doing drugs, they're getting busted for drunk driving. That's not the message we want to bring to our children. We want our children to grow up and have a good life. Amen to that? Amen. We want them not to struggle like we had to struggle. Amen? Amen. We want them to have a great life. We want them to learn from our mistakes. But like I said, there's nobody here in this whole place right now, this whole campground, there's nobody here better than anybody else. But there's only two paths to follow, the right one and the wrong one. And you can't do nothing for nobody else but pray for them. I know I've tried. I tried to have my own children, not get into the stuff I got into, and I got a couple kids that do, the, do it in there, and I can't do nothing but pray for them, because everybody's got to walk their own path, and hope that you get it before it's too late. The world's getting a, it's a bad place to live in right now, you know that? You can walk around in the regular neighborhood today and get killed in a flat minute. Used to be you had to go into the big cities to get the, the drugs and stuff. Now you can go to your next door neighbor. And you don't even have to do, do that today. You can go to your grandma's uh, medicine cabinet. And a lot of people are guilty about that. They're taking pills that's not prescribed for them. But it's a bad world. And the reason why it's a bad world is because Satan's in charge of this world today. Satan's in charge here. Jesus is up in the third heaven. Satan's the king of the airways and the earth. And that's why there's so much corruption. He's a great deceiver. So it's just something to think about, all right? Who hasn't been baptized here? Have it. Anybody been baptized? Who hasn't been baptized? Me. What's your name? What's your name? Sebastian. Give, there's Sebastian. Give him a hand and welcome here today. What's your name? What? Crystal. Tell him. My name's Crystal. Okay. Who else hasn't been baptized? Me. Me. 
Kelly. Raise your hand baptized. if you ain't been baptized. No. Leave that out of all. That, that's a shocker. <laughs> My family? Your granddaughter? Great niece. Great niece? Well, tell them your name. Tell your tell your aunt to tell her her name first. Jane. Give Jane a hand. She's been on it. She ain't been baptized. I haven't. You ain't been baptized? No, I'm Shelly. Shelly ain't been baptized. I'm telling y'all right now. God bless y'all. But if you don't be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you ain't got a chance. So saying all that, is there anybody here that needs to be baptized today? Did your mom say it was okay? Well, we'll get on the phone and call her. I don't want to get in trouble. How old are you? Nine. We'll call your mom. Does anybody here else want to get baptized today? Really? How about you? No, honey, not today. Okay, you don't have to be baptized if you don't want to be. If you Can't want to be forward. baptized, you need to get with Lynn. She's going to take a piece of paper and pencil out. She's going to write your name out the way you want it on your paper because I'm going to give you a certificate of baptism. Okay? So, uh, saying all that, is there anybody who's been committing any sins and ain't been living right that knows they got to repent? <laughs> you know, I don't know her blood pressure was up on the way here. It's hard to tell. <laughs> she said, my blood pressure's up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe she's getting excited watching you get baptized. Right, she's Hazel? Three names. Oh. Girl here. There you are. Yes. So anyway. When you're baptized. Everybody say, Father God. Father God. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Say, please forgive me. Please forgive me. For all the sins I have committed against you. For all the sins I've committed against you. Say, I promise. I promise. Starting this day. Starting this day. That I'll try. I'll try. To do. To do. The best of my ability. The best of my ability. To live right. In the name of Jesus. To live right. I pray. I pray. Amen. 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 Now, Bob, close us out the prayer. <laughs> Um, Father God, we thank you for bringing us all here today. Beautiful day, beautiful weekend. Great people that are in your spirit. May we receive all the joys and blessings throughout the day and week for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I walked okay. the whole, walked the whole beach. The, I walked out where the public turned around. Yeah. Last weekend, and the first I had to stretch out. Holy Spirit comes by three names. What are they? Zoomed right in on your faces. Beach. Alright, I see some nuclear reactors out there. Damien, what did you think about camping? It was good. Huh? It was good. What was the highlight of your uh, your weekend? Is there another one to match it? I don't know. You don't know? 
That's good. What about you there, Corey boy? Walking to the park. That was the best thing of your weekend. That's good. How about you, Brendan? What was the best thing of your weekend? The whole thing. The whole thing. There you are. There's a good kid. Chocolate cookies. Chocolate cookies. Get some. How about you, Sebastian? Andy, are these yours, Oh, going to the Forbidden Island. There you are. How about you, there, Andrew? Swimming. Do you know I'm giving new piercings today, don't you, everybody that came? When you're smiling, when you're yawning.